Hallo everybody, guten Abend zusammen, how are you all doing? Wie geht's? I hope you're all doing well. It is Monday and we are live here on YouTube, the WXW Monday live streams with Mark and Matt. Please say hi in the comments. Let me know where in the world you are do joining us from here this evening. Um, and we're going to be joined shortly by uh, our very special guest, former WXW Unified World Wrestling Champion, Massive, Jern Simmons. So I'm sure that you've all got some questions you'd love to ask him. Uh, so please type those questions there in the chat. We will ask your questions to Jern, make them as interesting as you can, as unique as you can. And uh, yeah, we'll get asking them to our friend Jern when he joins us in a few moments time. Uh, but first of all, let me bring on my co-host this evening, the one, the only, and once again, he hasn't turned his webcam on this week, so I'm a little bit worried. So here goes nothing. Milberg met Demasi. Matt, you're normal this week. <laughs> yeah. What well, I mean, what do you mean? Me? It wasn't I wasn't here last week. I told you I was sick. My cousin, Judge Mulberg, was here. I'm li I'm actually in his place right now. This is the kind of money you'd get from from working as a judge. This place is pretty cool. I gotta say, I got a pi piano all, all the way back there. It's <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay. Um Okay. How are you doing this evening, Matt? <laughs> I'm doing great. I mean, we got we we had a pretty long weekend, but it was it was fun. I was still kind of recovering from that. <laughs> yeah, uh, me too. I am uh, tired as hell, and I know that's um, absolutely nothing new coming from me. You're um, always tired. Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, we should definitely uh, talk about the events of this weekend very briefly. We had We Love Wrestling 44 and 45. Um, we Love Wrestling 44, our 30th WXW event live in the Market Halle in Hamburg. Um, wow, what an event. What a crowd, Matt. They were insane. That was my second time at the Market Halle, and that might have been my favorite crowd so far <laughs> in the almost year for me with WXW. I, yeah. I, I genuinely, like, that was my first time doing commentary on my own, so spoiler for those of you who uh, haven't seen the show. Um, well, but it's no, not live on like... WXW now yet. It will be in 24 hours time, hey, though. No, people, people might be seeing this after 24 hours, Mark. Okay, okay, okay. So yeah, if you're watching this live, give it 24 hours, and you can watch We Love Wrestling 44 um, in just 24 hours time. If you're watching yeah. this um, after, it might be less than 24 hours. It might already be up. Uh, to see that show, all you got to do is hit the Join Now button or Mitgliedwerden for our German-speaking friends. Below this video, €9.99 Euros, cents per month, and you get access to a ton of incredible content. Um, I don't want to go through all the results. I don't want to make too many spoilers, uh, because I really want you guys all to watch this show and really enjoy it. Um, but just a couple of real highlights for me. Uh, Kohei Kinoshita from Japan made his debut against another former WXW World Unified Wrestling Champion, Tristan Archer. And Kinoshita was hugely impressive here, Matt. What was your thoughts? Oh, he was incredible. For, for a first showing, especially against somebody like Tristan Archer, he was mind-blowingly great. I mean, there was this one moment where he got a bit of offense off, off on against uh, Tristan Archer that blew my mind away it was it was incredible i'm, I'm not going to say what it was i'm going to let you guys see i think i know exactly what you're talking about you know exactly what i'm talking about yeah. as soon as you see it you're going to know oh, it. you tried to beautiful yeah it was an incredible match i thought the match so, could have been over there and then like i fantastic. did think the match was over there and then but tristan yeah. archer still kicked out it was a great showing for kinoshita who has been doing this for 20 years at the age of 26 he started at six years old and wow he is in fact, one of a student of Shigehiro Irie, they met 20 years ago when Irie was still 15. And since wow. then, Irie has been his, his mentor and teacher. So who knows? He might have the same career that Irie ends up having if he keeps you know, putting in performances like that. Absolutely. I cannot disagree with that. And speaking of uh, Shigehiro Irie, uh, in the main event, he went one-on-one -on -one with Peter Tahani. Uh, I'm going to say nothing about this match other than watch this match you have to watch this match 
Anything hey. to add to that, Matt? <laughs> I think you said everything. I mean, how uh, you, you could? I mean, I'm not even. For those of you who are familiar with WXW, when you see those two names, I don't really have to sell you on the idea of, of watching it. And for those of you who don't, well, time to culture yourself. Absolutely. Uh, and also, uh, we were in uh, the incredible uh, Papenburg at the stunning Alter uh, Keschel Schmieder. A phenomenal venue, beautiful place for We Love Wrestling 45. Um, a couple of highlights there. Um, Peter Tahani and Egg LeBlanc, superb contest. And um, Lawrence Roman, the Pitbull of Ambos, the current WXW Shotgun Champion, going up one-on-one -on -one against Shigahiro Iria in our main event there. Again, two matches you just have to see. Another incredible crowd as well. Those guys were crazy. I can't wait to be back in Papenburg next year. Oh, I have to wait a whole year? Come on, man. That place was <laughs> awesome. That, that, yeah. that quickly became one of my favorite venues. Uh, definitely. That was an incredible place to, to, to have wrestling happen in. It's just the aesthetic yeah. of it all. Just the city of Papenburg was also really cool. Drove past the their, um, the very the, the famous Meyer Port, I think it is in English. Yeah. A mm -hmm. what, what the hell is a harbor? A port? Some one of those. <laughs> <laughs> Had a gigantic cruise ship. It was friggin' it was incredible. Yeah, we drove past it and we're like, wow, look at the size of that thing. Incredible. Uh, okay, so let's just look who we've got here with us this evening. <laughs> Your so, Simmons is with us this evening. <laughs> I can see Yen in the chat. He'll be here live in a couple of minutes' time. Um, so just do, she says, I'm doing well. G glad to hear it. He's joining us from Germany. Uh, pom 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 says hi everyone. Hi pom pom pom. How you, are you doing this evening? Uh, like a Virgil says hello, you beautiful people. Hello Virgil, great to see you. We have Ashley joining us from New York. Incredible. Thank you very much. What time is it there in New York right now? I'm is assuming like six hours. Six hours back, so it's probably like two p.m. <laughs> it's, it's it's easier for, yeah. for Ashley, I believe. Yeah, it's probably a better time there. <laughs> uh, Alessandro says hello. Hi, how are you doing? Um, Chloe says, sup Yern. Yern will be with us, as I said, here in a couple of minutes' time. Just wait. Uh, and as I said, if you've got questions, ask them there. We will be asking Yern your questions live on air here in just a couple of minutes' time. Dan's here. How are you doing, Dan? Great to see you, my friend. What is happening? Um, wait, also, very important comment. I was right. It is 2 p.m. It's very rare that I'm <laughs> right, so I kind of want to celebrate and bask in this moment. And Yern is saying in the chat there, like, this guy is so keen. Never before has a guest been in the chat. So let's bring him on, because this man is up for this tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, the one, the only, the three-time former WXW Unified World Wrestling Champion, massive Yern Simmons. Yern, how the hell are you doing this evening, my friend? I'm doing good, man. I, uh... Honestly, like you guys said, we had a we had a bit of a busy weekend. I was uh, pretty messed up yesterday, but I had a good night's sleep, and now uh, I'm feeling great. So yeah, let's get this uh, party on a roll. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, awesome. Um, so yeah, uh, for you ladies and gents in the chat, Jern Simmons teamed with uh, his good old buddy Lavaniel to take on the team of Norman Harris and Zavara Mean in Parpenberg at We Love Wrestling 45. Um, yes. And this weekend coming up, we're going to be in Oberhausen, where you're, you're going to be facing Norman Harris in a Fans of the Lumberjacks with Leather Straps match. Yes, which I was I was told uh, is a first for WXW. Yeah, it has it, it has happened at, everywhere. No, it has happened at other fa places. Felix Kohlenberg told me that one of those matches matches happened with Ultimo Dragon. Of all oh, people. Wow. So I, <laughs> which is not something I would like necessarily think of when I think of Ultimo Dragon, but it's pretty cool, you know. <laughs> so well I'm looking forward to that match this weekend, but um whilst our fans are asking some questions, posting some stuff there in the chat, I've got a question I'd like to ask you uh, to kick things off here tonight, Yem. Sure. What is your very first and earliest memory of professional wrestling? Oh man. Um I think that, like, I remember just watching it in general, but the thing, like, the one, like, moment that really stuck with me, like, initially was uh, Rhino goring Chris Jericho through the SmackDown stage. That was, like, the first, like, big moment that, like, I can, 
uh, actively remember. Yeah. Yeah. And how old would you would you have been around that time? I think it was like nine or ten. Yeah. That's yeah. But I I was born ninety one, and that happened somewhere in two thousand and one. So. <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm not a historian. All right. I don't know the exact dates of everything, unfortunately. But uh, no yeah, so it's so it's either nine or ten. So was that like one of those real moments that got you really hooked, or were you already kind of hooked on it, and that's just the first thing that sticks in your mind? I th- I, I think I, I think that definitely helped get me hooked. Like I was like I was getting into it, you know, and like because I think it was like the first or second time that I like saw it. And then, like, that was, like, such a huge thing that I was, like, oh, wow. Like, <laughs> that I was really impressed by, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. I, I honestly, it's so rare to hear, like, first memory of wrestling and somebody to say Rhino. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's it's not the name, it's, like, most people would think It's kind of crazy to think about that, like, even, even I haven't thought about it that much, where, like, my first... Like yeah, like you just said, like my first wrestling memory is Rhino, and then I got to like, you know, attack him in Hamburg, like in my own career at one point. So that was, you know, I guess that's kind of cool. But yeah, I never actually thought about that myself either. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> how was it um, attacking Rhino then? Like, tell us more about that for you know myself. I'm not really aware of this, and all these guys in the chat who might not be aware. Well, uh, at the time, I was, of course, um, a close confidant and enforcer for uh, the late, great Karsten Beck, who was the WXW Unified World Wrestling Champion at the time. And in Hamburg, uh, <laughs> he had a match with Rhino for uh, for the title. And, you know, like, I don't know if you guys have ever met Rhino in real life or have just, like, seen him up close, but he's basically a refrigerator on legs. <laughs> so it's kind of like it's hard to stop right and at one point you know the ref was out the window a whole bunch of stuff was going on and i thought you know this is not a fair matchup like a, a man versus a man beast is not a fair matchup so i thought i'd slide in there and even the odds you know and then you know like i clotheslined him which led which led to Carson retaining the title. So I think I did all right. <laughs> <laughs> I think my plan worked out, you know, so. Yeah, fair yeah. enough, fair enough. So I see we've got a couple of questions in the chat here. Um, right. And anyone who, like, you know, follows you on social media, you're in those, you know, you're a massive video game fan, uh, yes. anime fan. So um, <laughs> yeah. our first question here, what video game would you like to forget just to replay it again? Oh my god, that's such a that's such a good question because there's so many of them. <laughs> um, like there for the, like there's some games that I can just like play over and over again like kind of infinitely. So I think I would kind of scratch those off because I get the kind of the same enjoyment anyway, like of playing mm. them over and over. Um, but I I think like I would just have to go for like it's really like. I feel like kind of cheap answer, but I would probably say like the first two generation of Pokemon games, because also because like I was a kid back then, and you have a lot more like childlike wonder and imagination <laughs> <laughs> in your mind. And I like I think we we might have talked about that during the weekend met, yeah, where. We Flash, or the fun right? thing, yeah. Where the fun thing of yeah, Flash, for example, yes. <laughs> but like, so oh yeah. For, for those that don't get it, like obviously Flash is a move you need a Pokemon to light up dark areas so you can see where you're going. As a kid, I didn't know where it was. So at one point, when you enter Rock, rock Tunnel, which is actually quite a large cave with a lot of paths and everything. Uh, I had to grind it out, you know? <laughs> like, I, just, I had no vision, and I just kind of bump in the walls, and eventually I, I got out of there. But it was also the thing of, like, there was so much going on as far as, like, people were trying to find out, like, secrets in the game, like, oh, how to catch Mew or how to do this and that and blah, blah, blah. And uh, I don't know, like, you back then you didn't look it up online, maybe like because we were kids you know like you don't really stop to think about it <laughs> yeah but now it's just like even if like if if i get stuck in a video game or whatever i'll give it a good shot but if i'm if i'm at a point where i'm like all right you know this is taking long enough i'll just look it up 
and then, and then go from there. So I think like the, yeah, just seeing just kind of like the mystery behind it, it's obviously kind of lost me now. And I think that was the biggest case for me with like the Pokemon games. Great answer. So like Thank as you. a whole, what kind of games are really your thing? Are there any games which like you're really not a fan of or maybe not even specific games or like genres of video game? Yeah, I'm a I'm a big big fan of RPGs. Like I like uh, role playing games. Like I'm a big fan of Fable and the Dragon Age series and those kind of games. Um, Dragon Age is good. Yeah, I <laughs> I love Dragon Age. I'm also like uh, a big defender of Dragon Age too. Like a lot of people don't like that game, but I love it. I'll, I'll be honest. I've only ever I've actually only ever played two. I wanted to get into Inquisition, <laughs> but I never like I got onto it way too late. Oh yeah, the time I made my way to Germany. Yeah. Two was the only one I played, and I remember thinking, like, I don't get the hate. This game's awesome. Yeah, that's the uh, kind of the same thing I would meet. Two was the first one I played. So, like, that was, like, my way to get into the series, right? Besides that, I'm uh, I'm pretty big into fighting games. Or, well, I would say fighting games, but it's, it's mainly just Tekken. <laughs> like, I, I, used to, <laughs> I used to grind Tekken, like, a lot. And yeah. um, it was a couple of times uh, when I was younger, like, I actually got, got invited to tournaments for Tekken, but I never went because I didn't have a car or a driver's license. So. <laughs> <laughs> and where I was living at the time, it was kind of impossible to make that journey then. Um, and then besides that, like, I I am not big into shooters, like shooting games. Like, I just don't get it, you know? You're not a Call of Duty yeah. fan then. No, not at all. <laughs> and then, like, I don't like. I don't know if there's any Dutch people in the chat right now, but like most Dutch people that play video games or say they play video games, all they play is Call of Duty and FIFA, which are two games that, that I I've no, <laughs> no interest in. <laughs> Fair enough. Like I'm a huge Call of Duty player myself. Like and I pretty much have been for the last Jesus like ten years. <laughs> so, he was playing um, it right before we, we we made our way to Dresden for True Colors. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I mean, hey, it felt like. To be fair enough to you, like so many people are, right? Like yeah. it's, it's not <laughs> like like that's a weird thing. I think it's more of a weird thing for me that I'm not into it at all. So, no. although I will say, I will say, I did really like Star Wars Battlefront too, but that was probably because once you get enough points doing shooting, you can. Be cool. Become Darth Maul. So, <laughs> <laughs> great reason. <laughs> that was my entire reason for buying and playing the game. <laughs> Wait, so so who's who's your main on Tekken though? Um, I think like for for the last couple of Tekkens, it's uh like I try to, you know, become familiar with most of the characters. Uh, but my main has for the most part been Lars since he debuted in Tekken 6. Mm. Um, but yeah, I, in Tekken 7, I played a lot of Claudio as well. And But yeah, I think the main is still Lars. So it's not one of the like tried and true Tekken characters. It's not like Eddie Gordo or Paul <laughs> yeah. or Heihachi, unfortunately. I mean, I've, I've always... I, I haven't really played a lot of Tekken. I think the first one I got was like 5 on the PlayStation 2, and I used to play that with my brother a lot. The only character I've ever played is King just because, oh, hey, look. <laughs> yeah, it's a, yeah. It's a wrestling leopard. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, like, <laughs> Tekken 3 was the first Tekken I played, and I, like, religiously played King, so. <laughs> mm. Yeah. I completely get that. Uh, but we have another question here from Ushi, which is coming up for this weekend. If fans are going to slap you with the straps, how hard should they slap you, Yern? I'm not gonna lie, this is not something I've really thought about at all because I would assume people would just want to slap Norman. I'm sorry. But, <laughs> <laughs> I, but mean... I would say if if you do, um, you know, if if the how hard you would slap Norman is a hundred percent, maybe go for like ten percent on me. You know, <laughs> I, I, I think that'd be fair. So. I mean, I would have thought, like, if fans are going to slap people with the straps, how far should I be prepared to run is a better question. <laughs> That's that also a very good question. If you do hit me, like, too hard, you will catch hands. That's, that, that is my promise to you. That is, <laughs> that, is, that is in the contract that you are all, whoever is signing up yeah. for it, you guys are signing that in the contract that you guys, are, it's a waiver as well in there. I don't know if you guys read between the lines. You got to be able to... <laughs> 
deal with the consequences. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Like at this point, like it's like if and I was there at ringside, I would not be slapping Yum. I would just be focusing all my energies on Norman Harris. That's a, yeah, but I think that's a very fair question as well. And I guess this goes out to the chat. You know, who would you rather have hit you back, Norman or me? Yeah, Norman's I, not massive. Exactly. I look at Norman's arms and I think like, yeah, th that's cool. I had the same. My arms were that size as well when I was like eight years old. So, you know, <laughs> it's <laughs> you got you to oh, make these things out. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, Chloe here is saying she was she, she was here in Germany to slap Norman. <laughs> I agree with that one. I yeah, mean, like yeah. I wish I didn't have to be up on that production balcony during that match to direct and produce our video side of things. Well, I'd love well, to be down there with a strap, Mark, dishing so out some punishment. What? Both of us are going to be upstairs. So here's the thing: How about we make a deal? One of us pulls double duty, and I know you don't trust me with your job, so you can pull double duty, and I'll go down and grab a strap for that match, just for that match. Okay, the problem is I could do the English commentary, Mel. I could not do the German commentary. You know okay. that. Mein Deutsch is wirklich scheiße. <laughs> Trust me, it's though. not very far off from what I was doing. For <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> so, yeah, I think we're both going to have to sit on the balcony and, you know, hope our friend Jern here uh, does all the slapping for us. And, you know, our fans. I really hope our yeah. fans are going to... Do us a solid here and not let us down, Matt. I'm curious about a technicality though. If you were, if if one of, if if you were to accidentally grab one of the straps and hit Norman with it, would that be? Is it? Is there a disqualification there in that in that rule set? You think? I th I think so. Yeah. Oh, I think okay. it's, I think it's just a lumberjack that are allowed to do it. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, you know, maybe I should double check on the date because then I would just, you know, I'd try to go outside and try to convince somebody to give me their leather strap. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> But as well, you know, we've seen in the past with Norman, he's a big fan of getting outside that ring and stalling. Um, so I think this is going to be the first time where he's not going to be able to run. Like, he's trapped. Like, the yeah. second he goes outside, that man's in trouble, and I cannot wait to see it. Yeah, and th and that's the thing, you know, like in my in my illustrious career in WXW. I've, uh, you know, I like, I had a long, long standing rivalry with, uh, with one Alexander James, which was just like, you know, based around him running away for the most part. All I wanted was like, just like one match one-on-one -on -one where he couldn't get away. And it ended up in the cage match and, you know, AJ ended all bloody and battered and I beat him. So I'm assuming the same's going to happen, uh, with Norman on come Saturday. I'm really hoping so. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, Dan's got a long post here, but to sum up and get to the questions, do you have a tradition before walking through the curtain or something that you do to psych yourself up and get ready for what's about to come? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's a very simple answer. No, I do not have a pre-match ritual. Maybe, like, I'll, like, I'll stretch my legs, but that's about it. Um... There's people that do crazy stuff. I remember at one point I'd uh, I'd, I'd a match with Ilya was in it. Uh, somebody else, I don't remember. But like they were both super intense. Like I think it was like a three way dance, yeah. You know? But they were both like warming up, like super intense. Ilya is mm -hmm. crazy when it comes to preparing for a match. Um, yeah. And then I, I like <laughs> I was just sitting backstage at the bar. Like, <laughs> <laughs> they have my music in and I walked out. It's, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't need something to get me into the zone. I think as soon as I walk out, it's just, it's just, you there are the zone. I am the zone. <laughs> <laughs> the danger zone. No, oh. but, uh, <laughs> no, I, I, I think like, you know, like, I can't knock people who do have like some ritual, you know, everybody's different, whatever floats their boat. But for me, I'd, yeah, I don't have anything in particular. Fair enough. Um, yeah. Ushi, another question here. Thanks for all the questions tonight, Ushi. Uh, is yeah. there any place or any country that you would love to have a wrestling match in? Oh, um, I mean, I've been to a, like, I've been to a lot of countries, or as Scott Steiner would say, I've wrestled a lot, a lot of countries. Um, no, I think like Japan. I think I would still uh, like to go to, also because I'm a weeb. But, uh, 
Yeah, I think <laughs> <laughs> that's a good I mean, reason. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but like, I yeah, I, w- I would like to still like wrestle in Japan. Uh, besides that, like a, a particular place, no, not really. Um, I, because I usually, <laughs> I'm really bad with places anyway. I, like, <laughs> whatever. <In> I, way. <laughs> well, in the sense that, like, I don't remember the towns. Yeah, you know I mean, like mm. the names of the towns and like what was in the town or whatever. Yeah. Like, I'll remember the show and the match that I did, but I don't remember remember anything else. Well, that's mainly because right all, like, you know, any of us see when we go into these places is the road, the service station, the road, the venue, the hotel, yeah. the road. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> yeah, and that's and that's the thing. Like, I remember uh, it was somebody on Twitter or whatever, like, pointed out, like, oh, yeah, it must be great, like, getting to travel the world, like, with wrestling. And, it's just, and I was just like, well, you don't really see much of it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I I had I've, I've had, like, a couple of trips. One was to Israel and another one was to Finland where it was just one show, but they booked me for like the entire weekend and Mm -hmm. I actually got to like see places and it was super cool. Like it was super fun. Like both are beautiful countries, but it's, (laughs) I've been doing this for like 10 years now and it's happened twice. So <laughs> it's, a, it's a bit of an anomaly. Yeah, yeah I'm, I mean, I'm like still trying to get to that donut place in Hamburg that people told me to go to. I just never get the chance. <laughs> there's, a, get... there's a donut place in Hamburg. So apparently, there's a place called Bramables, and Virgil's in the chat. He's the, he's he's the one that actually said because I asked. I said like, oh, I don't remember what my tweet was, but it was like, oh, this is such a great mm-hmm. day. The only way that it would get better if there was a friggin' a donut there, and yeah. he's like, oh, there's this great donut place in Hamburg. I still haven't had the chance to pass by just because we end up getting there and it's like, okay, it's already time to, to be at the, at the venue and everything. Yeah. <laughs> that's a, that's a thing like that. I think maybe a lot of people might not realize is that setup and everything for a show takes a long time as well. Yeah, it takes and forever. like prepping everything and like, it's a, it's, it's a whole process. You know? I mean, also just for, since we have the chance right now, it's just like thumbs up and big old like, Pock champ in the chat about for, 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 for everybody for everybody involved in those shows like the staff yeah. the people on staff and everything the people that help like build like set up the ring and tear it down afterwards and stuff it's really like it's it's a thankless job but we try to thank them as much as we can yeah yeah, yeah. and I, like, it's absolutely a team effort you know? yeah yeah yeah, it's an insane number of people you need to <laughs> make a wrestling show work. And, uh, you know, not just like, you know, the ring, but when you think about things like the LED wall, putting out the chairs, organizing the merchandise, uh, you know, the lights and production there, the video production, everyone else that goes around helping, doing the door, doing the tickets. Like, it's a ton of effort. Yeah. Uh, and those are some long, long days. <laughs> um, so Julian asked, just coming back, um, to a fan, like, what if you want to get physical with Yearn? I don't think that's advised, Julian. No, I really well, don't I think that's kind of, advised. I mean, what kind? Do you just want to dance with Yearn at fan? Or is it, is it, is it... <laughs> <laughs> like, if you're ta- If you're talking about, like, fighting and, like, <laughs> like, that sort of thing, like getting physical in that way, then you know, test your luck with the with the strap. But I have to remind you that every other person, like every other professional wrestler on the show, even Norman Harris, even Norman Harris is a trained professional, right? So they probably got a leg up on <laughs> most of you guys. So, but if it's something else, like Matt said, dancing or you know whatever you have in mind, uh, you could probably ask me if you're ringside. You know, it's uh, if you're one of the lumberjacks, you're ringside, you know, pull me aside. <laughs> ask me, and then uh, we'll see what we can do. Yeah. Fair enough. Um, <laughs> moving on. I think we've had enough questions about getting physical. We earn Simmons here tonight. <laughs> Nemox asks, are there any people you'd like to face for GCW versus the world over World Tag Team Festival weekend? Um... Honestly, I think Effie would be cool. Like, he's a GCW guy, right? And then uh, Matt Cardona would be a good one. You know? mm-hmm. So I think that those are the main two. Because uh, <laughs> those are the main two that I'm most familiar with. Yeah. I, uh, you know, I'm fortunately, or like, unfortunately, I'm like a little too busy to be completely caught up on American indie wrestling at all yeah. times. So I think I always like lag behind a little bit. 
Um, but yeah, for like from what I know from GCW, like those would be the main two that I would like to work with. Yeah, I'm not even sure if GCW have confirmed anyone that they're bringing over yet. Um, I know I've been too busy myself to keep up with that, but I don't know <laughs> if they've announced a single name so far. So maybe for anyone from GCW is watching, there's two names that you should bring and put up <laughs> against Jan Simmons. Yeah, it would be cool. <laughs> Definitely, definitely. Um, Julian's back with another question here. After Fan, what's your next goals? Maybe tag titles or shotgun title? What about another unified World Wrestling Championship run? What, I think, what I do think you see next? Yeah, I think the unified title would be cool too. I think that's definitely still a goal I have because then it would, you know, You'd kind be... of put me kind of put me in the WXW record book, books as the greatest of all time because I'd be the only four-time WXW mm. Unified World Wrestling Champion. Uh, besides that, you know, it's I kind of try to take everything on a day by day basis and not plan ahead because a lot of times it's not in my hands, right? Mm -hmm. So we'll just see how everything unfolds. What you know, what happens at Fan, what happens afterwards, et cetera, et cetera. Like it all it depends on a lot of consequences. I think so. That's my answer. I hope it. <laughs> <laughs> no, answer it again. <laughs> oh, well, I'm, think <laughs> I'm thinking as well, you know, Shigahiro area and Jan Simmons is a match I might like to see at some point down the road. Yeah, it's 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 a match that's, that's happened a couple of times as well, but we, we've traded wins and losses like back and forth. So it's something that's uh, like definitely like up in the air and it's definitely mm -hmm. a big test for me, but also a big test for Shiggy. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I mean, we're going to have to see what happens at FAN because uh, yeah. there's, there's been uh, an interesting announcement. Today. Well, yeah, for those of you in the chat who haven't been keeping up with it, Jern, I don't even know if you've seen this yet. Um, I have. So, I have. Yeah, the singles match Shiggy was supposed to have against Michael Oku was on Saturday it had become a, a freeway dance with Metahan involved thanks to that mysterious piece of paperwork we assume Norman Harris gave him. And now, um, after the events of Parpenberg, it's a four-way also including the shotgun champion Lawrence Roman. He might lose that belt this weekend because um, the odds are really stacked against him. Um, Jern, how do you see that match going out of interest? Uh, yeah, the thing is, like, obviously the odds, like you said, are stacked against Shiggy because, <laughs> you know, it's... <laughs> I don't know. As a champion in a multi-man match, it's it's always I, like I should know. I've lost my title twice in multi-man matches and three-way dances, so it's like it's it's never in your favor. And I think it's also everybody's gunning for you. Like you've got a big target on your back, you know. So I think it's more likely that you'll see alliances formed against Shiggy against a champion than you mm -hmm. would see Shiggy team up with somebody against you know one of the challengers so i like it's obviously i don't think you know it's a big secret that this is his biggest challenge to date but you know he also overcame like 15 other guys in 16 carats so yeah. you know maybe uh <laughs> maybe he's, he's got a lot of momentum going you know so yeah, maybe everything is working out in his favor yeah, and he's he's had the, he's defended the championship abroad also in the meantime. Yeah. He's he's all he's defended it already in a multi man match and fight for Paris against A Buck and Egg LeBlanc against names like yeah, Calvin and, at MLW. And 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 to you know, to back that up, he's also like I guess been a little busier than the rest. So he's yeah. like more in the zone, so to speak, you know. Yeah, he's warmed up, ready to go. Yeah. Uh, so, Jacob Crane has appeared in the chat, and question, why is Matt faking having a normal-looking apartment disgusting? This isn't my apartment. This is my cousin's apartment, Judge Mulberg. It's, it's not mine. I it's, said it already. It's also not very normal-looking. I I, it's really I not. <laughs> no, I, <laughs> just think most yeah. I don't think a piano in your apartment is very normal. Like Matt, Matt said at the beginning of the show, that's like that's because of that judge salary. Yeah, yeah he's, he's got expensive <laughs> taste. It's not me. I don't know what yeah. you're looking at me for. <laughs> He's off on vacation somewhere. And hopefully he never comes back. <laughs> oh, I mean, hey, look, if he's if he's gone, he's he's if he's gone, he's probably up in in you know, in, in the little courtroom playing with all the other judges. Moving swiftly on. <laughs> Yen, is there a tattoo which means something very special to you? 
Um, yeah, I guess. I, I guess, you know, every tattoo that I have means something, you know. But I would say probably, uh, like, I need to get into it. It's all reversed and everything. I think this one means the most. Uh, this one, like on the on the bicep and everything, like it's a it's it's a mud horn from Star Wars. Like it's an insignia from um, the Mandalorian, and it's <laughs> uh, my girlfriend has the same tattoo. Like we got matching tattoos, and it's because <laughs> it's just the most nerdy thing in the world. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> it's because that insignia, like, is is for the Mandalorian and uh, you know the child Grogu, like Baby Yoda. And it's because, like, they're a clan of two. And me and my girlfriend looked at each other as, like, a clan of two as well. And then we will all have, always have each other's back. So I think that one means the most to me. Awesome. Awesome. I'm not sure what I was expecting there, but that's <laughs> fantastic. Um, story behind it. I love that. Yeah. Uh, quick, quick fire question here. Do you watch football? No. <laughs> I, I, d I don't watch any sport, really, you know, besides professional wrestling the greatest sport yeah on earth. no but uh yeah i like outside of that i don't really watch any sports it's uh yeah <laughs> i like that's that's the thing like even as a kid i i always like doing sports i like being athletic and being active and stuff um but watching them not so much so i get that yeah so so yearn was the guy coming in and be like why are you watching you could just be doing it instead yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, like that's the thing. Like, I come from a like a pretty um, sporty family, I guess. Like, uh, my dad always did karate. My mom always did ice skating, and like they <laughs> all like went to the gym and all that kind of stuff. Um, so, but then it was the thing. Like, my mom would watch ice skating. My dad would watch football. Like all the time. It was, it, it, just thought it was the most boring thing ever <laughs> <laughs> I like I couldn't get into it but like like if I do it then it's a lot more fun except for right. ice skating maybe I, ne I never liked ice skating but <laughs> <laughs> I I was on the rink one time and I almost decapitated a lady with my skates so I'm never gonna do that again yeah yeah <laughs> I've been there before <laughs> oh, I'm glad I thought it was just me <laughs> Those skates are dangerous, bro. They'll get you. <laughs> I mean, I tried ice skating, but my balance is terrible. So you know, yeah. I mean, never well, again. Th that's the thing. Like, uh, like where I grew up and everything. Um, it's like just like it's a small town, so there's not a lot to do. And when it was winter, winter, and like the ice would be like on the lakes and all that kind of stuff the entire town would go ice skating. Like it was, it was just like a regular thing. So I, I had to learn it as a kid because everybody did it. Yeah. You know? But yeah. It, uh, then I later, I didn't do it for a couple of years and then uh, I tried it again and I just fell on my ass for like a couple hours. So <laughs> <laughs> ice skating is definitely not like riding a bike. You definitely <laughs> lose your touch after a while. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Ushi, what's note? Did you already play the new Star Wars game? And if yes, what did you think about it? I've not played it yet. Uh, like, it's a... For you guys, I guess, and for those that don't know, like, I think he's talking about the sequel to Star Wars Jedi Fallen Jedi Order. Jedi Survivor, I think. Is what yeah, I, I, like, I was... I was a huge fan, even though it took me forever to play Fallen Order. Uh, a close friend of mine, Benjamin, kept, like, uh, nagging me about it. So eventually I gave in, I played it, and then I loved it because the game was sick. But, uh, no, I've not played Jedi Survivor yet. I uh, I also, like, has to do with time. Like, <laughs> I've been really busy <laughs> lately, like, so, like, since it came out. Um, and besides that, I'm also... Uh, I'm looking forward to Diablo 4 right now. I'm more excited and hyped about that. So I'm planning on putting other stuff like on the back burner first. And once Diablo 4 releases like early June, I'm just going to nerd out over that. So yeah. Fair enough. Probably <laughs> <Chloe laughs> wants to know. Um, did you wish? Like, I, I don't really know much about the Star Wars games. It's a bit over my uh, head here. <laughs> do, you, do you know anything about Star Wars? 
Mark or? Um, not really. I'm not much of a Star Wars fan. Um, Fair enough, so, yeah. you know, <laughs> a lot of that stuff goes right over my head. <laughs> Yeah, that's fair enough. Yeah. I'm lost in this conversation with everyone going on about Star Wars. That's, yeah, it's come up a lot. It really has. It's why I'm feeling a little bit out of my depth right now. I'm sorry. I'll, 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 I'll try to think of it and not mention it as much. But No, I, I mean, this stream's about you, not me, so it's all good. Like, Matt, you about, need to about, work about harder about and cover for me. It's about all of us, Mark. We're a team. Like we said earlier. Team, right, goddammit. Every, 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 yeah, everything about the shows in WWE is a team effort. We're, 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 we're a united front. Yeah. All right, but do you want me to, want me to answer Chloe's question? Yes, yeah. please. That's why it's on the screen. <laughs> um, no, I have not seen Eurovision. It's um, it's I don't. It's it's another thing I've I've never gotten into. It's also something that, and maybe like I'm not a patriot or anything. Like I'm not somebody that that, that like backs up like the Netherlands and everything that they do. I actually like sometimes I'm actively against the Netherlands, but uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> like with football, for example, because they always choke, but with Eurovision <laughs> as well, like it's, it's hard to watch because you'll see the show and it's just, I think Eurovision for the most part is how about like elaborate and impressive, impressive visually like your act is right. Like how, you know, and then the Dutch show up and it's just a dude with a guitar, you know, and it's just singing like some song that is all right. Like it's, it's all, they always send in super whack stuff. And it's just like, <laughs> dude, like, I don't understand how the people in charge of that, like for like my home country have not figured out that it's about wowing people. <laughs> you know you what, know what I mean? like... I'm completely with you on that because it's really similar with like the UK's entries I'm like similar position with the UK I'm not a patriot yeah. oh you know I'm actively against the UK and so much they're doing especially with the current government but that's a <laughs> rant for another time not for this yeah. live stream so but yeah, I'm like... the one I'm the one out of depth of, of out of depth of non like European. <laughs> like, how does Eurovision work? The people just the, does the, the the government is like, yeah. So we've got you here for a very secret mission. What is it? You're gonna go play? <laughs> like, how does it work? I I don't know. I think I think most countries have like a, an elaborate like audition. Yeah, they uh, usually have like this real elaborate selection process, yeah. and it's like you know government funded, government approved. And yeah. no one seems to figure out that, like, for whatever reason, they always choose the most middle of the road dog shit stuff to send in. <laughs> um, like the UK, especially. And uh, they're always like, why didn't we win? We had a really good song. It's like, did you see some of the crazy shit that was there? Like, yeah. Of course we were never going to win. <laughs> Get real. Yeah. I, yeah. That's, that's exactly how I feel. So. I think I think because of that, maybe my heart has been broken by my own country too many times. <laughs> like I, I can't deal with it anymore. His massive heart could not yeah. go on. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to hope that my heart is recognized. But <laughs> okay, well, somewhat relevant follow up then. <laughs> uh, what kind of music do you listen to, Jan? I listen to everything, man. Like I listen to all kind of music. I don't know. Like you can see, like I'm wearing a Metallica shirt right now yep. because me, uh, me and my girlfriend went to a concert of theirs in the mm -hmm. Amsterdam Arena recently, which was like their first concert of a tour for their new album, which was sick. Like, <laughs> I, like and the reason we went is because, like, even though, like, you know, we both like Metallica, I, I wouldn't say we're like Metallica super fans or anything, but it's the whole thing of like they do have like this kind of status aura yeah yeah absolutely. yeah and 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 it's also the thing of like <laughs> so we were like how many times are we going to get the opportunity to see them live you know like it's it's kind of there's a special thing about it so uh but yeah like it was sick like it was and even like there was a obviously a bunch of new songs from their latest album which i didn't know because <laughs> i hadn't listened to it at all but it was all like it was all great and then um but outside of that like I said, I, like I listen to a whole bunch of stuff. Like I have one playlist on my Spotify, which is called Cardio because that's why I initially got Spotify. Um, <laughs> and it's just a collection of a whole bunch of different stuff. Like there's no real rhyme or reason to it. And uh, yeah, so like 
I, for example, like I really like Phil Collins. Mm -hmm. I really like Lady Gaga. I really like Fly of the Concords. You know, like the, the list goes on and on. So, <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's pretty much a whole bunch of everything. And and uh, specifically, I I will also have to point out I'm a big fan of country music. So, because that's a, like. A lot of people uh, don't like country music. <laughs> yeah, I really yeah. don't like country music, <laughs> and I'm really, really surprised that you are. What is it about country that you love so much? I like the simplicity of it, honestly. Like it's a, uh, it's a lot of, like with country music, it's very, you know, you know what you're getting into. You know, <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> like the lyrics are all very literal. You know, yeah. like it's all just like very in your face. And overall, like it's, and I think that's the thing with music in general, or at least for me, it's like it, it's very mood dependent, right? Mm. And country is all about emotion, I think. So it's like if you're in the right mood, I think country music is great. So yeah. But that's, okay. That's uh, what I reckon. Well, Mr. Wrestling Fan wants to know who your favorite country music act is. I would probably have to go with a with like a, a classic and say Conway Twitty. I think uh, you know I I can tell by both of you guys that you have no idea. I have no idea. Kinda <laughs> on him. The only thing I'm thinking is the, uh, like you're okay of everybody in, on the roster on WXW. The one I can imagine with a cowboy hat the most is your and even before you told oh, me. Oh hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, as well, Chloe wants to see you lip sync to Bad Romance. Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, maybe that'll happen at one point, you know. I, maybe I, that'll be I, your I... big special entrance for next year's 16 Carat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Can we get the copyright for that? I don't know. Uh, I mean, <laughs> I don't think so. Uh, we let we haven't got a, money for that kind a, of thing. <laughs> let me shoot yeah, a tweet make to it Lady happen. Gaga. You know? like, yeah. <laughs> let me shoot a tweet to Lady Gaga real quick. See what we can do. <laughs> Well, to be to be to be honest though, I do I do think Bad Romance is like my favorite Lady Gaga song. So that's actually really <laughs> funny that Chloe mentioned that one. But I also okay, <laughs> I also really like um, all of her songs from the A Star Is Born soundtrack because yeah, I think that movie is phenomenal in general. So, but yeah. It, but it's completely different style than what she usually does, right? But I think uh, those songs are great as well. <laughs> I mean, Gaga's awesome. I think yeah. probably yeah. Poker, Face, Poker Face is probably my favorite one, though. Ah, oh, fair enough. I can tell Mark doesn't like Lady Gaga. So. <laughs> I mean, it's the kind of stuff I'll listen to, but like, I'm not like hugely into. Into you it. know, yeah, like. Yeah, um, yeah, like I remember she had a couple of songs on the GTA Five soundtrack on whatever that like a random pop station was, and like I used to love that pop station. Just you know, when you, you know when you don't really, really play the game, you just want to drive around the outskirts of the island as fast as you can. That sure. station was perfect, and there was a couple of her tracks on there, and it was like, yeah, this is like proper driving, like high speed <laughs> crazy yeah. shit. Like, oh, this, oh, I thought you were gonna say this is like road trip music. <laughs> I don't know about road trip music, but you know. I was about to say I've been I've been, I've probably traveled with you more than anyone since both of us have started WXW. I've never heard you put on Gaga even once. <laughs> oh no, I've got like an awesome like driving rock playlist on Spotify. So you know that's what's on when we're in the truck. Um, but moving swiftly on from our music, uh, Ushi was like, "How hard is it to maintain your beautiful bald head?" <laughs> it's honestly. It's 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 a hassle, man. I um, because <laughs> I forget about it like a lot of times, right? And then like the hair, my hair grows super fast. But then obviously, like I can't really grow hair like here anymore. I get like the horseshoe gimmick. Yeah. And then you know, like in a couple of days, uh, <laughs> my girlfriend would always tell me that I look like Doctor Phil. So, <laughs> which is not really the look I'm going for, you know? Probably it's not in, what you want to be life. hearing from her either. So. No. <laughs> How much can I pay you to actually let the Dr. Phil grow out? <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll keep the mustache as well. Yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> At least for one the complete look. <laughs> no, but, um, so yeah, it's actually, it's actually kind of a hassle. I probably don't shave it as much as I should because I'm pretty lazy. But, um, yeah, it's... Uh, and then it's the same goes for the beard, 
right? Like the whole, the whole, the whole shebang of bang over here is, <laughs> is actually a lot of work, which you wouldn't think it was. Be, I, having long hair was a lot easier, I will say. Like, because you, you don't really have to do anything. You just like get the get your ends cut and everything every now and then. Um, but uh, I do feel a lot better with a bald head. I have to say, because. Obviously, my hair was thinning a lot, which is, you know, as I said, very apparent now because I can't grow any here anymore. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it, that was also like um, after I lost my hair, like immediately, like the day after, like I woke up, took a shower, saw myself in the mirror. And then I was just like, yeah, this is fine. You know, like, I, <laughs> like, like, this is good. I can I can I, I can roll with this. You know, so. So I had, yeah. I had, I used to have long hair to about like this length or whatever. And oh, I remember right. when I first like cut it off, there's a whole story behind that. But first, I remember when I first cut it off and took my first shower afterwards, I came out and it was basically a buzz cut. And I just put the towel over my head and I'm like, oh man, all right, time to dry the hair. And it's like, what the hell? It's already yeah. dry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so much more convenient. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That, that is definitely the case. So especially like with me as well, like when I still have the really long beard man i like i mainly grew that as well to just kind of see if i could do it but that like that was that was a mistake <laughs> that was, uh, hindsight being 2020 i should not have done that <laughs> yeah long beards i love it when like the beard gets long but i get this awkward bit where like it grows under the neck and just goes and you're like that's yeah nasty and like you i'm lazy so like you know trimming yeah. and shaving that is so much harder it's why like i don't always shave like the sides of my head as often as i like should do so like yeah. now it looks good you give it like another week it'll look shit and then i'll still want to shave it for another two <laughs> weeks and i'll look horrific <laughs> just because yeah it's so much work part of me's like yeah I, I love the look but i'm like why did i do this it's too much work for my liking well that's that's the thing for me as well like like with the bald head like if i would do it regularly and honestly it probably wouldn't be that much work you know like i could do it like go under a shower shave it off and be fine like if i would do it like on a daily or semi-daily basis but as we just covered like both you and i were like we're lazy so <laughs> <laughs> so then yeah like i said then I, it gets to the dr phil stage and it's just like ah now I got to get the trimmer first, and then it's it's the whole thing. It's the whole thing. Yeah, <laughs> it's a lot of effort. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's hard to look this good, is what you're saying. Yeah, it is, dude. It is. Okay, well, as we move on from uh, personal hygiene, <laughs> yeah, are you more of a New Japan WWE or AEW guy? I think there's great things in all three. Uh, first and foremost um but i would say that i think i'm mainly a wwe guy i and it's i think it's mainly a nostalgia thing honestly like i i grew up on wwe obviously like when i go back and like because I'll, I'll have phases right like sometimes i'll get like way more excited about wrestling than i probably physically should um <laughs> but whenever i do that i go and like watch wwe and Usually, like, the stuff that I grew up with, obviously. Um, but, yeah, I, th I think in general, I'm more of an A... Uh, <laughs> I was going to say AEW. I was more, I'm more of a WWE guy. But, uh, like I said, I think there's great things in all three. And, I, like, I do, for the most part, enjoy, you know, uh, seeing stuff of all three, of at least, like, stuff I like. <laughs> there's obviously always stuff that, like, doesn't entirely float my boat so to speak but yeah that's with everything right so yeah, yeah no I, I i totally with you on that i think all three companies uh, put out some real great wrestling all three at times put out some utter stinkers and yeah. some real <laughs> terrible stuff yeah. um, but that's the same i think for any company you know whether we're looking yeah. you know impact or gcw or even back in the day like you know wcw and ecw yeah. and every company that you know has put out some of the best wrestling in the world has also put out some of the absolute worst it's just yeah wrestling I mean, that, right yeah that's, that's it yeah absolutely i think it's entertainment in general 
<laughs> you know, like 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 as we just talked about, like for example, with music, you know, like there's artists who like, you know, they'll have like your favorite songs or whatever, but they're probably going to have a song as well that you won't like, <laughs> you know, and it's the same if you look at like movies or TV shows or whatever. Uh, like, I always think like I think the I always try to compare wrestling like to Marvel because I think <laughs> like the, the similarities are like are yeah there's a lot of them yeah but um if you look at their them as well like with their movies like yeah like there's hits and there's a couple of misses you know like there's <laughs> like there's stuff that you won't like and there's stuff that you will like and that sort of thing so yeah i, I think it all like i don't know like there, there's never something that like it's a hundred percent perfect like perfection doesn't exist i think so I mean, like, maybe it does exist. I mean, for me, perfection is probably watching Norman Harris get like <laughs> get a, le- a leather strap. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> uh, that's that's good. That's gonna be perfection for me. I mean, yeah, yeah, probably for me as well. Like, if that would happen this coming Saturday, I would probably, you know, have a big smile on my face. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, well, maybe we should get back on to, you know, um, some of the current happenings and things going on there. Uh, but sure. ladies and gents in the chat, whilst we do that, don't forget you still have time to ask Yearn your questions. Make them as different, as interesting, as unique as you yes. can. Let's uh, let's dig deep and ask Yearn some questions. He's maybe never been asked before, but let's keep it clean, please. <laughs> and, um, yeah, let's maybe yeah, look at, like, the last... Um, year of your uh, career here in WXW. So, like, you know, um, yeah. starting at Carrot 2022. Yes. You were in the four-way main event there. Yes. Unified World Wrestling Championship on the line. You didn't win that night, though. Tristan Archer managed to pick up the victory. Um, but you were able to pick up that belt, that championship, not too long afterwards uh, in Frankfurt before losing it, sadly, to Tristan <laughs> once again. Yeah, very shortly afterwards as well. <laughs> sadly, <laughs> no, yeah. Unfortunately. I think yeah. that was like a month afterwards. And I mean, we all know how it happened. For those of you who don't know, it was an accident that happened with Levaniel yes. trying to help. And so yeah. I, I do actually yeah. have a question about that. Okay, sure. Um, Shoot. It's, it's all in, in good in good nature, but it, it was a long time ago, but is there some some blame still there towards Levaniel or any any kind of like it doesn't you know I'm not gonna say ill will but I mean that was a month a month long reign or something yeah like, something like, I, I think like three yeah. weeks or something yeah yeah it's um I mean like I, obviously I've I've given <laughs> I've given that a lot of thought myself as well because uh, in the four way like the, there was a moment where you know I I think I had Tristan beat as well. And then, uh, Levaniel, you know, broke it up, which in a, in a four way dance, of course, it's every man for themselves and everything, but it, it, it like, obviously it stings because you, you want to win the title. And then afterwards we, we have the three way dance at Frankfurt. Levaniel's not there. And I do end up winning the title. And then he's in the rematch for the title. Levaniel's back and I lose it again. You know, I have thought about like, I don't know. Maybe he's like a bad luck charm, <laughs> you know. Um, but at the end of the day, like I, you know, like I've talked to him about it, obviously, um, and then I, I've given it a lot of thought, and I do think, like with him, it, like it's it's all coming from a good place. Like he's definitely like <laughs> he's trying to help out. It's just a lot of times it's also like a, I think a kind of a bit of inexperience, you know. I think I think a lot of people because he's gotten very quickly like to the top of the card Levaniel has I think people kind of forget it he's, he's kind of a kid you know at times so yeah that's uh I think it's it's water under the bridge for now but you know it's if if it does end up happening again more then uh, it, 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 it will probably have some more dire consequences for him so to speak <laughs> I mean you did warn him back then yeah, I I warned them back then, and to his credit, you know, because that was that was my chance. At that at that time, Heisenberg messed it up for me, and you know, I took care of that guy, and he hasn't been in WXW since. So that's pretty cool. But um, 
Yeah, I haven't like, even seen him since. Like he's disappeared off the face of the earth. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but um, but yeah, I like I warned Levaniel as well, and when I had that rematch with Tristan after I lost the title, he didn't get involved. You know, so credit where it's due. He did. Uh, he did <laughs> take the advice. So I, I would like I said, I I think it's water under the bridge, and now we just move forward. So, um, I mean, you just touched on, you know, you had uh, issues with Heisenberg last year. <laughs> yes. um, you know, you guys, Jesus Christ, there was some brutality <laughs> in those three <laughs> matches. I um, mean, I've talked about, you know, loving those clonkers, big meaty men beating on other big meaty men and just destroying each other. But I will say the couple of times where you guys got a little too close to the commentary balcony, there were um, dubious water stains on my pants at some point, so... <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I will let you know, Matt. That that was never my intention, but uh... <laughs> I'll, 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 but now I'll we know it's a Heisenberg. possibility. It is your intention? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Maybe, dude. Maybe I'll get a little close with Norman as well. Man. <laughs> <laughs> Norman scares me, but not as much as Heisenberg does. Fair enough. Yeah, I can understand why. But um, so I have to ask as well. How did you feel, um, you know, back in December when you saw uh, Levaniel win the World Wrestling Championship for the very first time there in Oberhausen? I yeah, I mean, like obviously, like I wasn't there, so like I like I do think that's kind of a shame because I, like I I saw it pop up on Twitter probably. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like I like I was super stoked for him, you know, because like I said earlier, like you know, like he he cost me the title along with the four-way but the four-way it's every man for himself and like you can tell how badly somebody wants it you know like and and that's what i'll say like to the credit of all three other guys in that match like it definitely means a lot to all of them you know like it means like that title means the world to all four of the all four of us in that match yeah uh but i think i think you definitely get like a better feel for that like when you're actually in the ring with somebody you know um and as far like as lavaniel obviously that uh rivalry and feud that he had with tristan has had been uh building for quite a while as well and i think like tristan kind of kept undermining you know lavaniel so i think i was just really happy for him like i was i was stoked that he was finally able to you know to get his come up and as far as Tristan goes and also mm-hmm. like get to the top of the mountain. Yeah. You know? I think he definitely deserved it. Um, what about like the events that happened, um, you know, at Bielefeld at road to 16 karat gold when Norman threw his technicalities and that tournament and all of the shenanigans that went on. Like, how did you feel when, you know, the Vanya was robbed of that title without, even really having more than one opportunity to defend it, because obviously he had the you know phenomenal match against um, Axel Tisha, able to beat him, but yes. then robbed of that belt so quickly after. How did you feel about that? I mean, well, you know, for a lack of a be- lack of a better term, and pardon my French, but I think it's bullshit. <laughs> you know, yeah, I like like you said, like he got robbed of it, and uh, you know. It- there's no like he didn't lose it fair and square i think he himself for you know obviously you'd be ups- you you're always upset when you lose a title you know like as i mm-hmm. said like i i was upset when i lost the title um but i think you can give it a place and be at peace with it a lot more if you know that it's like fair and square you know mm-hmm. like you lost to who to somebody who had that point in time like you know on that day in that match was a better competitor you know yeah it's and i think like that that will then fuel you to step up your game and try to get the most out of yourself and like improve you know and i think that's like that's just not the case for him obviously like he was robbed from the title like you said he was (laughs) cheated out of it basically and then never given a fair chance to win it back so it doesn't it doesn't make you look inward and try to improve yourself and become a better athlete a better whatever but it just makes you resent somebody else and yeah. then like you just 
it kind of it, it can put you in a like downward negative spiral, which obviously is not good. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I feel like I think it's as far as like Norman goes. Like obviously, I think he uh, he abused his power as director of sports, which I and you know to <laughs> to make it a little fair, I think a lot of people in WXW would do that if they were in that position, you know, but uh, that doesn't make it any less shitty for Lebanon. Hmm. Well, interestingly enough, like, well, I think most of us agree that um, Norman completely abused that uh, position. Here on YouTube Live last week, the people in the chat somehow found him innocent and said he didn't. <laughs> really? I, I, okay. We, we, we were shocked. Um, I, think, I, I think you guys need to have the chat as a special guest next time and get to the bottom <laughs> of it because I like to I like to know their thought process on it. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 hey, if I phone up my cousin, I'm pretty sure we can get him back. On <laughs> let, yeah. let, let, let's just let's just leave it where it is and accept it because you know Chloe asked when is Norman sentencing, and I'm pretty sure that it's next week in Oberhausen yeah, when the fans Saturday. get to. Slap the shit out of him with those leather straps. <laughs> well, and it brings up another point. Yep. And he's still using the. Uh, is he? <laughs> yeah. What he, he admitted it here on, on the live stream. Liar, dude. Like, yeah, yeah, the worst. The absolute worst. Um, <laughs> um, and here I, here I am <laughs> giving him credit. A little bit, you know, saying that like other people in his position would do the same thing. I don't know about like the whole, that whole credit card business. So, yeah. But, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm not even sure what's going on next. Chloe says WSO needs to get on top of that. Um, yeah, really interested in knowing what we're doing about this whole credit card situation. Um, yeah. Because I will say as well, that, um, you know, uh, a week after 16 Carat, we were in Paris. Uh, and I was there for the Fight for Paris show. And I know for a fact that his Amex was declined repeatedly in Paris that weekend, uh, which he was not happy with. And I, potentially that could have been the company Amex. So maybe, maybe it has been cancelled, but he's just lying about the whole thing? Because that wouldn't surprise me. But he was not happy about that Amex being declined. <laughs> yeah, maybe he's just trying to save a little face, you know. Make himself yeah. look cooler than he is. You know, it's, seems like a I'm typical trying, Norman thing to do. a lot harder than that. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, uh, so back to where we were. Unified yes. title, road to 16 karat gold. So you had qualified for 16 karat. You were going to be in the tournament before you were sadly um, off with yes. injury. Um, what can you tell us about that period? That must have been hugely disappointing for you. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Because it it actually happened like right after that show, after yeah. Road 16 Carat in Bielefeld. Um, I was driving home and I <laughs> I got like a tummy ache, I guess. And I initially I thought like uh, I might be food poisoning or something, you know, because of the, the vomit and everything as well. But usually, you know, like when you have food food poisoning, I don't know anybody in the chat if they've never had it or if they have had it but if you have had it you'll know that like after you then vomit you feel a lot better <laughs> you know like it get, like it's out of your system and everything so so I, I remember driving back I vomited and then I was just like I still feel the same you know like this is mm. weird and I got home I slept for like a little bit and then the next day I um, I just like I did I had like no energy I didn't want to eat anything. I didn't want to drink anything. I just like stayed in bed and felt terrible. And uh, it got to a point like I, eventually like in the evening, I did get out of bed because I was just like, I got to eat something. Like I can't just like do nothing, you know. And then I just like I tried, but I just couldn't. Like I didn't have, I don't know, I just didn't have it in me. And it's very weird. Like I don't even know like <laughs> how to describe it really. Um, and then I, I was just like, you know, I'll, I'll just go back to bed. And then it just like, there's this like huge, like stabbing feeling like, uh, to the right of my stomach, which is where your appendix is mm. <laughs> coincidentally. Um, and then like, yeah, it was, um, you know, like when I, uh, told my girlfriend that like it was to the right, she immediately called like the hospital and everything because, 
uh she figured out that it was the appendix like i wasn't clever enough to figure that out but (laughs) uh but yeah but then like we went to the hospital because like it was the worst pain that i've probably ever felt like i wow i I broke my ankle in in a wrestling ring years ago and this was way worse um because like the thing like with the ankle at least like when something breaks it's like that moment and then like for a little bit there's pain but then it it'll die down right but like with this it was just like 30 minutes non-stop like i was getting stabbed um so yeah like we went to the hospital that they actually sent me back home first even though they were like yeah this is appendicitis they were like we can't guarantee that you'll get help right away because it's in the evening people come and it's it was busy there and they there were people coming in with like stuff brain stuff hard stuff you know which takes priority over an appendix so they sent me home with painkillers and then they were like yeah next day you know come back in the morning we'll make like an appointment you'll get help right away and blah 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 so and that happened so i did get help right away when i got there in the morning and then they scanned me and they and <laughs> the the nurse that scanned me was new so she was just like, hey, I've never scanned for appendicitis before, but uh, I'll be able to see it. Don't worry. And I was just like, I don't care. Just do it. <laughs> like, yeah, dude, I'm in so much pain. I don't care. I don't need to know your medical background. I trust that, you know, you work here, so I trust it. Yeah. And then um, the the uh, nurse that was with her that was, like, checking if she was doing everything all right and everything, um, she, like – she was telling her like, yeah, it's definitely like appendicitis, but I don't know what this stuff around the appendix is. It turns out it was like already partially ruptured. So wow. flew in and everything had already come out and like it was going to my organs. So they were like, oh, we should do like a different scan. And they went to like the head of the scanning and everything. And they, they told him like what was up and he was like, no, he, ne- he needs to get surgery right now. So then I got <laughs> wheeled off to surgery uh immediately so that was chill um but yeah then um it turns out that like recovery period for it you know is like about a month like four weeks which obviously meant i would you know just barely miss 16 carat but i (laughs) i will say that like looking back on it obviously like it's it's kind of bittersweet you know like you like you never want that stuff to happen but it's never had a good point in time so like i can't really be too down about that and then like afterwards like i'm glad that i did i did take that time because if i had like still done the 16 carat weekend i probably would have been really messed up because just going back to the gym like when the recovery period was done like i went to the gym a little bit like two weeks before that already but that was just to do like some light cardio and to get moving a little bit because i was stationary a lot initially and then when I went full on to the gym, like I was immediately like, like I went and worked out and I was like lightheaded and like there's all these like aches and pains that I didn't even know existed, you know? So yeah, I'm glad I took a little longer. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you say you took a little longer, but you were still there um, Saturday night, the big match, um, Norman and Bobby Guns. And you know, when things started getting out of hand, as you know, somebody I th- had to I think, step in, you know. Yeah, you know, uh, we know you've always been that guy who, if you see something ain't quite right, you're gonna step in and do your best to make it right. And man, like with did Carson you take and a Rhino, beating. right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that sounds a little different to me, but <laughs> um, but yeah, but like, man, did you take a beating from those guys on yeah. um, Saturday? And obviously, you know, you weren't at 100. percent You hadn't been hitting the gym, so that. Yeah, you know, obviously, put you at a severe disadvantage to usual. But how was that for you? Because that looks that was yeah, worrying. It was awful. At times. <laughs> like it was, it was awful. But like, you know, hindsight, I like part of me is glad I did it because I do think like otherwise they kind of would have, would have had their way with Bobby. You know, obviously, and maybe like that's what encouraged Levaniel and uh, Michael to jump in. You know, yeah. I was like. I don't know for sure. I haven't (laughs) talked to them about that, you know, but um, yeah, it's, um, you know, it's like, it was just one of those things where like lines were just crossed. 
So somebody had to step in, even though I wasn't a hundred percent, I was like, you know, if there's nobody else, I'll do it, you know? And, um, yeah. So obviously that's where I also found out, like, I do need a little longer to recover because (laughs) as you said, I, uh, they did a real number on me and I got messed up real bad. Um, but yeah, like I, uh, like I also said, I um, I definitely think like it was the right thing to do because it it uh, you know <laughs> depending on how you look at it, it turned the tides to Bobby's favor and it made sure that Norman is not the director of sports anymore. I mean, so. who knows if if you hadn't stepped in, maybe right now Bobby would not be here and probably yeah. me and Mark too. And exactly. Bish- yeah, we probably, probably would have been fired. He'd have been fired first. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but also, like, you m- missing 16-karat gold, uh, as disappointing as that was, it also means that we got a last-minute replacement who, like, most of us were really unfamiliar with, Mike DiVecchio. What are your thoughts on Mike D, Jan? I have to ask. I, uh, well, the, like, to be honest, like, I'm I, I'm not that familiar with him <laughs> myself either. Okay. I, I like, I've, I've ran across him a couple of times, like, on independence and everything uh but i will say i think like he's very he's a very impressive physical specimen Mm -hmm. my worries is only like will he like because he obviously is the number one contender he's in the four-way match coming saturday um so which which is not no, mike d's not in that match he's uh i believe he's also out at the minute uh after oh really I yeah. think so. Yeah, Stop he's not in the match. Oh uh, wait, yeah, yeah, yeah. Michael wait, wait. in the match, not Mike DiVecchio. Yeah, no, he was supposed to be there on Hamburg, right? And That's he right. Yeah. There. yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that was it. I'm just thinking, like, because technically he is still number one contender. Yeah. Right. So that's that, that's why I was thinking of my apologies, but um, yeah, I like like I said, I think he's a very impressive physical specimen. He like he seems very athletic. My worry is just like, will he be able to put everything together? You know, like in the ring. Or because I also saw him do some stuff where, you know, he, he took a big dive over the top rope. And I'm just thinking, like, with his size and everything, if you miss one of those, it might be curtains. You know what I mean? So I don't know if that's the that's the smartest thing to do. If if it works out for him, great. But that that is an extra risk, risk you take as a bigger guy, I should yeah. know. You know? So, um. Yeah, like for me, the question is just like, can he be, can he put everything together? Can he switch on mentally, and then mm. then I think he should be good to go. Great input, yeah. And yeah. he's explosive as hell in the ring. He certainly yeah. made an impression. So, you know, looking forward to getting him back soon. I and again, another guy I'd like to see go one on one in the ring with. That could be something else. <laughs> yeah, that's. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, like, oh, Matt. Has Matt is... It's, it's my screen. It's just my screen. I've turned into a silhouette. I've gone vacant for a second. Oh my God. You've been it's... vacant for a long time, my friend. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, 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 th- I, you know, like, I think Matt said earlier he likes a uh, <laughs> big, meaty man slapping meat. I, I, <laughs> I got, you. I got, you. I got and, your to say it. I feel good. Yeah, and uh, you know, but I, I, I think that's in general. Like it's, it's uh, over the last couple of years, that's been something that's been on the rise. Is more like, I guess, like heavyweight mm-hmm. wrestling is something people have gotten into. Um, you know, for me, like it's like it's definitely a challenge. Like I said earlier, like Shiggy always challenges me as well, and I challenge him. Like it's very back and forth. I think like the same could be with Mike D. You know, I uh, like I said, I've I've ran into him a couple of times in the independence, and one time was very very early on in my career, like when I was only like a couple of months in, and I think like he was very new as well. So it's I think then it becomes kind of a question of like how have our careers and our different experiences shaped us, you know, and then mm. who's gonna come out on top because of that? Yeah. yeah. I mean, depending on how everything goes uh, over the span of the next months, you, the next time you guys meet is going might be in the ring for the Unified World Wrestling Championship. Who knows? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'd be I'd I'd be more than happy like if he wins the Unified World Wrestling Championship to take it away from him. You know, I'd, uh, that's uh, yeah, that's something I'd be more than happy to do. 
<laughs> M's fighting words right there. Um, do you know what? I'm not even sure if I have any more questions. We've um, <laughs> we've spoken a lot of stuff tonight. It's been awesome to have you here. As uh, Chloe says, Yearn versus Mike D. Book it. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm not involved in booking at all with this company. I don't help make matches in any respect, so I can't help you out there. But maybe if um, the guys who are are listening, maybe they'll think about it. <laughs> well, no. Yeah. Um, yeah, so Matt, do you have any more questions? Uh, I'm not sure we really have any more questions in the chat we're looking to put to Yern right now, unless you saw any you wanted to answer, Yern. Um, I, just, I mean, like, it's it's been a while since, uh, since some of the other questions. So I, I would just say, like, if you guys have any questions left, just, like, shoot them all out now, right? This is it. This is a one-minute <laughs> warning. <laughs> But One yeah. minute to ask your final questions to massive Jan Simmons here yeah. on the chat. Uh, or Matt, I don't know. Do you have any questions for me? Personally, <laughs> from your end? Yeah. <clears throat> well, if you were to pick a dance partner on fan, who would it be? A dance partner? I yeah, like I would, actually I, a dance partner. <laughs> and what dance would you do? And what uh, dance would you do? I would, I would say Fandango, and I would let him lead. Yeah. <laughs> that is... That is a way better answer than I even. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's the most obvious answer. I think <laughs> you know what could go wrong there. Just two guys being dudes, dancing, yeah. dancing, having yeah. a good time, just having fun. <laughs> yeah, enjoying each other's company. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just cool. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Anything else, Matt? Cool. <laughs> <laughs> No, that, uh, that, that was the that was the biggest thing that was going through my vapid mind. Well, if she wants to know what dances can you do, Jan? Oh man, that's um, you know, I I, I used to do the robot a lot back in the day. You know, back, <laughs> back in the day, like when I was a little wild, when I was a little younger, I used to do the robot a lot. I did. Uh, I've been known to throw throw the dice around a little bit. You know, do some greased lightning here and there. No a little shopping cart action, the shovel. You know, there's a, there's a lot of dance moves. The classics. Yeah, it's just. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you guys know them. Come on, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's for some for some really crazy occasions, I pull out the Oompa Loompa. <laughs> <laughs> um, cookies or brownies? I'd say cookies, man. Yeah, I like. I don't get me wrong. I like both. I just think cookies. There's more variety, so there's. Yeah, and variety is the spice of life. Yeah, you know? <laughs> so yeah, I would say cookies, and uh, specifically just chocolate chip cookies. Those are my favorite. Any particular brand of chocolate chip cookies? No, not necessarily. I'll <laughs> I'll eat them all, <laughs> brother. <It's... laughs> even, even white chocolate chip? Yeah, yeah. I I I love white chocolate. It's, oh, I'm uh, glad. I I, it, I feel like it's so underrated. I, it, there, was, there was a period of time in my life I, I, would, I would eat white chocolate every day. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was dedicated. I was grinding it out, dude. <laughs> got to get them them daily pulls. Yeah, I got to get, get, get those white chocolate reps in. Yeah. Uh, um, so I know, Ronnie, second time you've asked this one. Uh, is there any plans for a WXW show in the U.S.? Um Right now, I know of none. Um, plans could change. If they do, we'll post them on social media. Um, but right now, I know of no plans for a show in the US. Um, but are you participating in the non-beer beer pong tournament at FAN this weekend, Jan? Uh, yeah, I don't think so. I, <laughs> <laughs> I was contacted about that. And, but the message was in German, so I did not <laughs> read it seriously. So. <laughs> okay, who was it who contacted you? Can you say or? <laughs> I would like this. I, I I think it was a a, a gentleman by the name of Dennis Birkendal. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so he should know that y your German isn't particularly great to say no. to say the least. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, it's, like obviously, like I can, I, I think I can make out of it. Like, it, like if I did go and read it, but you know, like, like I said, in in general, I unfortunately, 
I'm pretty busy in my day to day. I would prefer <laughs> if I wasn't, you know, but unfortunately I am. So then like when I do get texts and stuff like that, I just like in between stuff, I have to look. And then I'm like, if it's in German, I'm like, oh, that's the, <laughs> like, I just like kind of let it slide. It's like, this is probably for somebody else. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And if it's important, they'll follow up with you and they'll remember that you speak English, not German. <laughs> yes, yes. So, <laughs> all good. Um, okay, I think that's probably everything. We've had a load of questions here tonight. Thank you very much uh, to everyone who's joined us in the chat, who's asked the question uh, and got involved with the live stream tonight. Um, thank you, Jörn, for joining us. This has been a whole lot of fun. Uh, any yeah. final words for the people here this evening? Uh, no, yeah, first of all, to you guys, thank you very much for having me. Thank you to everybody in the chat uh, for, you know, being so active and, and uh, showing up with all the questions. If, you know, like I, I do stream myself as well sometimes on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Jaren Simmons. So if there are any questions unanswered that, you know, you would like for me to answer at some point, give me a follow over there. And then the next time I stream, you can ask me over there. Uh, but yeah, thank you guys, uh, you know, both Mark and Matt for having me and to everybody in the chat for all the love. I, I really appreciate it. This was super fun. Awesome. Thank you very much, Ian. Yeah. Mulberg, any final words? I mean, hey, we just had the massive one on stream. He just answered a whole bunch of questions. All I'm waiting for is the massive ass whooping that Norman's going to get <laughs> on Saturday. <laughs> Hell yeah, bro. May. In the Turbine Halle at FAN. Also, Fantastic. Just, just, as, a, as a final warning, just please be careful where you're swinging those straps. Seriously, you, you guys are going to, you guys signed a waiver. Just <laughs> yeah. gonna, hit the right person. I, I'm just going to tell you that because I've seen you in run. He's, he's definitely a lot faster than I am. You don't, you cannot run him. I used to, all right. So, like a little piece of trivia about me, real fast before we close. I used to be uh, the, fastest runner in like my elementary school i beat everybody so you know just keep that in mind if you, if you do decide to hit me with a leather strap <laughs> ladies and gents <laughs> you have been warned uh but thank you very much to everyone for joining us we will see you all in oberhausen for fan this weekend i believe there are very limited tickets remaining so if you don't excuse me if you don't have a ticket right now <laughs> get your tickets at wxw-wrestling.com uh, check that out. Uh, and don't forget that in 24 hours' time, if you're with us live, or less than 24 hours now, uh, We Love Wrestling 44, our 30th event at the Marks Haller from Hamburg, will be up here live with some incredible action. And I believe it's going to be Thursday evening, 8 p.m. Central European time. Once again, We Love Wrestling 45 from Papenburg is also going to be here. Just click that join button bet down below or Mick Lead Verden for our German speaking friends, €9.99 per month for all of the incredible WXW action. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. I've been Mark Shuttle. I've been joined by Mulberg Metamarsi and massive Jörn Simmons. See you all soon. <laughs>